In fact, the, the outcome of the runoff elections in Georgia will have huge implications. The two Democratic candidates are part of the party's progressive wing. Uh, they're not moderate. They're out there, and they want to push it to the left. Let's bring in our panel. I'll start with you, Tony. Um, this could have an actual effect on what happens in Washington. Not often do you see, like, one election, but on this particular day, uh, these elections do matter, don't they? It's it's like Passover. Why is this night different from all other nights? It's because this is the night that can decide whether or not we have a bulwark against a progressive machine or we don't. And that don't, that idea of not and having Democrats possibly in charge of all three branches is frightening to 74 million Americans and dangerous to the idea of America in the world. We see that not only is it a difference in foreign policy, but it's a difference in whether or not they view America within that foreign policy. It's not just a difference in certain domestic policies. It's whether or not they see freedoms, liberties, the Constitution within those conversations. The people that we're discussing here don't, it's not necessarily a fight between, well, we could go down this road or we could go down that road. For a lot of people, and I will say including myself, it's about America or not America, this fundamentally different thing that, frankly, I've heard them talk about and I'm not very much interested in. Yeah. You know, Aaron, one of the things that Joe Biden said yesterday when he was there at a rally uh, is that if the Democratic uh, senators, if they win the Senate seats, that there will be $2,000 checks on their way out the door. And to me, I know there are people that need the help, uh, but I'd like them to get it not just send people to Washington that are going to send taxpayer money. By the way, we don't have the money. We're going to have to borrow it from somewhere. Uh, but that seems to be what they're selling. How does this affect you? You can get $2,000. Well, they always have to give something free away, but truly the balance of power for the rest of our country, for the rest of the United States, for the history of our country is on the line today. This is about socialism and communism versus democracy and freedom. Let's face it, John Ossoff is a trust fund socialist who makes Beto O'Rourke look like a member of Mensa. Ossoff has accomplished absolutely nothing in his life, literally nothing. All he's done is fundraise, so you can slow clap for that. Reverend Raphael Warnick, if you want to call him a reverend, is an anti-Semite. So if anyone Jewish is watching her out there, make sure you go vote Republican because he is an anti-Semite who has backed Louis Farrakhan time and time and time again. He is accused of abuse by his estranged wife and young campers at one of his youth retreats. He is a bad guy. Both of these candidates are not just bad for Georgia. They are bad for America. They are bad for freedom. They are bad for democracy. They are great for socialism. They are great for communism. And that's not what our founders of our Constitution and our country wanted for us. Okay. Rick Gates, uh, you worked on the Trump campaign. And one of the things I was wondering, though, is whether the president hurt himself criticizing Georgia as much as he did. Because in a, in a way, uh, he's criticizing the Republican leaders of the state. Now, I understand why, and we don't need to get into that in this conversation. But, to, but it, when he criticizes them, he is also criticizing Republicans that those people elected. So did he hurt himself criticizing them or is this just part of the game? No, absolutely not. If you look at what he did in 2016 all the way up to 2020 and now with the runoff in 2021, the president is doing what he does best. He's reaching out to the people directly uh, and, and concisely the way that he the likes to do it in his own way. And so it's creating a mechanism where uh, that intensity uh, that we saw in November is, in, in my opinion, watching that rally in Dalton, Georgia yesterday, it's still there. And the president came down to support the two Senate candidates. Very important that uh, they get elected. Uh, we don't want consolidated power in the hands of Democrats. Who knows what could, could happen? But the president absolutely did not help himself. In fact, I think he, uh, you know, uh, helped uh, tremendously uh, with uh, what he's going to be doing in the future uh, in terms of building that party. That party is still very beholden to him. Uh, and it was very smart of him to go down to Georgia and support both these candidates. I think it's going to continue to drive out that vote throughout the day for them. Rick, how do you think the party is different with President Trump at the helm? It's a completely different party in the sense that it's not a party of establishment anymore. Um, you know, looking back through the 2016 campaign, you looked at all the ways the president, you know, really came to uh, politics and they came to Washington and broke down so many establishment walls on both sides, Republicans and Democrats. Uh, it's a testament to the idea that the people are tired 
uh, all Americans are tired of politics and politicians. And it was a great refreshing opportunity for somebody to come in, being an outsider, to be able to break down these barriers that so many people have faced. And that's why there's been so much resistance, you know, to President Trump over the last four years, four plus years. And the more he continues to fight, the more the people around America see what he's actually fighting for and that really has value, which is why the stakes are so high and, again, why it was important for the president to be down in Georgia to support it, because a lot of those supporters are going to come out for him, even though it's, you know, voting for the two Senate candidates. Yeah. OK, uh, we're going to take a break and come back and talk about uh, uh, the progress or lack thereof as far as getting the vaccine out there and what's going on in various states. We're going to talk to Dr. Samadhi again. And I'm going to open it up for you all to ask some questions of him because you'll ask better questions than I will. Uh, in some cases, let's, let's hope I ask a few good questions and we'll be back with. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.